So every morning when you get up, what do you do for Sandy? Give her water, change her night light, feed her worms or crickets if we have any. And now a dog is trying to chase this little poor thing. So that's it for my video. How sure. do we how do we feed Sandy? What do we have um, to keep her fed and healthy for with worms? Meal worms. And you just gotta pluck them in our little oh. cage. She'll eat them. Do we grow our own meal worms? Yes. What's that like? It's hard work and sometimes you can't feed her because there's not enough worms. But maybe they're really tiny because they just were born. That just would, hatch. That wouldn't be much of a meal. Right. So tell me about the life cycle of the worm. So it starts as a bee. No, a worm and it goes into like this cocoon thing that can move. And it turns into a beetle. And then I guess the beetle turns into a beetle. Does the beetle lay eggs? Yeah, the beetle lays eggs. And then you have more worms, so it just keeps going and going around. What do you call that kind of cycle? The food chain. The life cycle? Sandy and the worms make a food chain. We feed oatmeal to the worms, and then we feed the worms to Sandy. <laughs> Every single morning, Tom changes the light for the lizard, gives the lizard fresh water, um, goes to our worm farm, gets the lizard some worms. Sometimes we have crickets for the lizard. I never ask him worms. to do that. <laughs> I've never asked him to do that. It's a routine. It's like embedded in him. He wanted a gecko and he like is the most responsible pet owner, child or adult I've ever seen. He starts his day as a homeschooled child taking care of the lizard. This weekend, hey Sally, you can't get a picture of this. You and sister are building some Legos? Yeah. Hey Sissy. Just dropped ZZ off at school and now we've got a little bit of time before the library opens. We do four to five days a week of study time at the library uh, and we have decided to start kind of a new little unit. What are we going to start learning about? The weather. The weather? What? How did we decide that we were going to start learning about the weather? It's so interesting. <laughs> We stop by the cemetery a lot of the mornings after we drop Z off at school while we're waiting for the library to open. It's just beautiful here, private, so much nature, Tom likes to find bugs. Gardens are glorious. Yes. This is a very Wednesday, Thursday, Friday day example. On Mondays and Tuesdays I teach yoga. On Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday this is a very typical day. And then Saturdays and Sundays every other week he is with his dad and of course Cece is home on the weekend so it changes things. There's always time to build a fairy house. You're trying to build a fairy house too. Yes. What are you building? A bug house. It's meant for bugs. Look at this. I just found a cocoon. This perfectly stationary cocoon. Okay, this is a red cocoon. I'm not sure what it is, but it looks very interesting. And the bed, it's made out of moss, and it 
it's gonna hatch in this very area. And it can hatch any minute now. You never know. Well, what's over here? Oh, that's just a fence and a bug house. Fence and a bug house. Can I pick that? No, you can't pick it. Look how, that must be like it's bloom. Ooh, I found something that I got. So let's see how long a typical study day is. Tom's just drawing free time. We picked out DVDs, we got weather ones. Oh, I'm in my comic book and so He's in comic booking zone and he wants to draw comic books. To you. Poo to you. With one on one, I don't have to do much for my thumb. Now think really hard. That is how you count to 100. We finish the numbers and he's going to have more free time. Drawing, that kind of stuff. Walk around, look around. A lot of free time in between studies. Captain Underpants, I'm going to draw somebody in underpants. I'm in my comfort zone, and you say me yeah. Do you not know? Take a picture of everything. We should check this out. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And then we can make a little house for Osma Begonia. My Osma Begonia. Perfect. We can make him a house. Green. That. What are you planning? I'm planning a house or a purse rod, and you probably see one of my toys. Ta-da! Oh, the rat's home. So this book inspired you to build something out of cardboard. Yeah, because it has a lot of good things that are that are small enough for this little rat to fit through. Like every one of these buildings he can fit into. Something you, you might have to take apart. So Tom practices his reading. These are really good. Piggy and Elephant books. And Dick and Jane, that kind of stuff. Hop, Dr. Seuss is good, like Hop on Pop. For Tom to read aloud by himself. And you know, I help him if he needs it.
So from like 9.30 to 11, we did our schoolwork. So that's our study hall at the library. So you are gonna spend your own money? Yeah. Did you come in here? How many times have you been in this store looking but didn't buy something? Two times. And then you got your money and you were like, I know exactly what I want because I've been thinking about it and planning how I spend. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, shake that bottom now. So after we left the library, Tom had his money saved up. This is the kind of stuff that's super duper important to me that he has and owns his own money. He manages it, he saves it, he keeps up with it. He doesn't impulse buy. We do window shopping, we think about purchases. We're very aware of what different things in stores cost. And um, that is something you learn by going out and doing it. If you lose money, you'll know you lost it. You know, you learn through doing it. You know, we take care of our money, we save it. Sometimes we go without. That's a really good lesson. We go without so that then you can get something bigger or something you want more uh, later because you saved money. Uh, so that's really crucial. And there, here's another thing, like these real life things, he goes with me on all my errands. He even goes with me to work, you know? Uh -huh. So we got some lounge chairs for our yard, some furniture, uh, and I went yesterday to look at them and I was like, what do you want for the second hand? $30. And I was like, okay, I'm going to think about that. Me, me thinking about how I'm spending the money. Today, I decided to go back and let's learn about bargaining. I offered $25 to the man to take the chairs today. And he agreed. So I saved $5. And that is a process I think a lot of people my age and younger don't understand is that all prices are negotiable. I would like Tom to understand that. Uh, and so then I had these huge lounge chairs. I had to fit them into the car. And so the footrest for them, I gave him, that's your project here. You get, you fit those into the car, you pack them into the car. And then he watched me as I tried all the different angles on these big lounge chairs to fit them into a small car. And eventually left one at the store and used rope tying the trunk down and tying the chair in to drive it to the house and make two trips. So stuff like spatial awareness, packing, um, fitting something big into a small car, tying a trunk down. These are important skills. And in my life, I see that a lot of people don't have these skills or aren't confident in it. And, you know, we need a, this, this is what life is. Moving stuff, buying stuff, managing money. This is what life really is. Tom is watching his DVDs playing Legos, drawing, playing with his toys at the store. After we eat lunch together in the afternoon, it's mama's nap time. And usually I lay myself right on the bed. Sometimes I garden. Uh, Tom builds fairy houses. So this is rest time. This is when I decompress. This is when he decompresses. He draws a ton. He plays with his imagination going over history stuff, science stuff literature he plays with his imagination in this stuff and he practices writing and drawing that's natural that's just what he does given free time to do something now as important as important god equally as important as you know taking the time to read with and read to your kids is controlling their media consumption you have to it's an addictive substance addictive behavior so in our house we do not have Netflix we do not have cable we have exactly one screen available in the living room and it is for DVDs there's no TV channel I control what DVDs come in the house and you've got a limited amount and that's what you have to watch this is this education, home education, would not be successful without controlling screen time and media. We do not play video games. Um, sometimes we use the computer to play at the library, an actual computer with a keyboard. We will play educational games. We don't play video games elsewise. He does get some video time. 
at his father's house. But um, for me, that's not worth putting up a stink because it's a limited amount of time and I have created a space for him to grow and that's just something else he goes out and experiences sometime. It doesn't become the fabric of his being like I see with a lot of kids. So, anywho, uh, it's nap time. Usually, afternoon resting time is definitely done by the time it's time to pick up Cece from school, but after lunch we have afternoon nap time. And uh, if you want to see what kind of DVDs Tom is watching downstairs, I have made an extra video over on Patreon of our favorite educational DVDs from the library. These are the ones that he's checked out again and again and again, and I know are really actually teaching him. So DVDs can be great, great, great tool. The DVDs, are, DVDs and podcasts are a huge part of our education, our home education. So, hit Patreon if you want to see my DVD recommendations, the one Tom actually goes and picks himself again and again. And enjoy the rest of this video as we look forward to what happens this afternoon and evening. <laughs> It's him. Wrapping up yesterday's A Day in the Life video. Reading aloud at bedtime is a huge part of our education. And I like to do a lot of readings that are kind of way above level. I like to read older stuff. The Wind in the Willows just has a really expansive, colorful, flowery um, language use. A lot of words, some words I don't even know the meaning of. And I have a college degree in English. Like, uh, so I like to do that for like incidental learning where we're not studying the vocabulary, but he's heard it. He's heard it before. He's hearing all of these things. And so then sometimes I do stuff more on his level for the read aloud book, like um, Runaway Ralph, Mouse and the Motorcycle, Ralph Two Mouse. He got really into the Mouse and the Motorcycle book. You know, Beverly Cleary, Judy Bloom, uh, that kind of stuff as well as classics. So uh, we read Jonathan Livingston Seagull a little while ago for the read aloud. But that's a really important of the total, total life, total self, year-round home education that I strive to provide. So that's all for our, our follow-along video. Love you guys. Thanks for watching. I'm going to try and do much more of these homeschooling videos. You can find more homeschooling content, amongst other things, at my Patreon account, where I post way more videos. And... So, video subscription, dollar a month, get a certain amount, five dollars, you get more videos, that sort of thing. So go check out www.patreon.com slash waycrunchy if you have found value or inspiration in what I have to share and would like to see more. In the meantime, I have lots of preschool homeschooling videos from back when Tom was in preschool right here on the channel, here on YouTube, so subscribe. Love y'all. Bye.